Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn of Cast Iron Cookwire, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookwire. And I just want to say welcome to the Pan Cave. Today I have this little number five single notch lodge that is really, really corroded. And it needs to be stripped. And we're going to be stripping that today using the easy off and a bag method. And we're going to be doing that coming right up. Okay, a lot of people don't have the, the time or the space to set up an electrolysis tank or even set up a lye bath. Maybe they just don't want to have the liability of a, a big tote full of lye in their garage or their carport because there may be kids around, there may be critters. Even if you've got a lid on it, you still have to be careful. So you may want to go to the most simple method of stripping a piece of cast iron, and that is using the Easy Off Oven Spray. Now, if you, if you do use Easy Off Oven Spray, you want to use the yellow cap, the yellow cap version. The active ingredient in it is lye as well. So basically, it's a lye bath in a can. We're going to be using a trash bag. Now, if you would like to use black, it does seem to do better outside if you're going to put it in the sun. So we're going to be doing this in our studio, so it'll be a little easier to film. So what we're going to do first of all, because this little pan, now this is a nice little, it's a one notch. It's got one single notch right here. It's a one notch lodge. And it is a little bit corroded. Now the inside is really gunky. And uh, first of all, we're going to get as much of the gunk out as we can. So let's get a closer look. And you see it's got a lot of gunk. It looks like somebody had tried to get it out before. Now it's really sticky and gunky. I'm just going to take my lodge scraper and I'm going to scrape as much of the, the thick gunk away first. What I like about these little scrapers is they have a rounded edge so you can turn them just right and you can get right right in the edge of most pieces of cast iron. Anything we can do ahead of time to save on the process, the better. So that's a lot of gunk right there. And I just want to say this. I think it's best to use some rubber gloves when you're doing this. Now, I'm not sensitive to lye, but, you know, I don't keep it on my hands very long. So I always keep me a little spray bottle of vinegar water solution just in case I splash something on myself and I want to get it off. It will neutralize the lye. We're going to take our little baggie, get it ready, and I've got a large bag, and this is just a little number five, so we're going to put it inside here. Since we're doing this in the studio, I'm going to take my little handy box that I used on my vinegar cleaning video not too long ago, and we're going to put this inside here just to keep from making too much of a mess. Like I said, you can wear rubber gloves. It would probably be not such a bad idea. So here we go. And don't forget to shake extremely well. Okay. Now I'm going to spray the back first. And the key Get her bag up here for a minute. The key is don't be conservative. Now you really want to be in a well ventilated area, not inside like I am. Probably not a bad idea to even have a fan. Now be mindful, there are going to be a lot of fumes involved. So, we're going to take this. We'll go ahead and spray our handle. Now 
and we're just going to leave it just like that. Now I'm doing this inside the studio where there's not a lot of ventilation and it's not a good smell. You definitely want to make sure you're in a well ventilated area, preferably outside. But if you're going to be in a carport or a garage, you want to make sure that you've got a fan set up blowing on you to blow the fumes away from you while you're working on it. Because I'm telling you, the fumes are really rough when it comes to this stuff right here. Basically, it's made to spray inside an oven where, there's, <laughs> where it's not going to be coming out at you. But you do want to take some precautions and be careful. So we're going to leave this one in the bag. We're, we're not going to spend days and days on this. We're going to leave this one in the bag for about an hour. Then we're going to come back and we're going to rinse it. Then we're going to apply a second coat. So let's check it out in about one hour. Okay, it's been about an hour since we sprayed our little skillet with the Easy Off Oven Spray. And we've, uh, we're back to check it out. And because it is going to be a little messy, I'm going to use my Grill Armor Liquid Resistant Gloves for this. Okay, we're inside our oven bag. We're going to kind of peel it back. And we can see we're starting to get a pretty good bit coming off. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to give it a rinse. You can rinse this off with your garden hose, but I'm going to go ahead and rinse it in the sink. Okay, we've got it rinsed and we're looking a little better. It doesn't have all that gunk on the inside and we're starting to lose some of the gunk on the outside. So we're going to give it another spray. This time I'm going to incorporate a fan just to kind of keep the fumes blown away because you will really be surprised at the fumes when they come off of this. Uh, I was kind of surprised myself. So you really need to be outside in a well ventilated area. And not bad to have a fan on as well blowing the fumes away from you. So since we're in a less ventilated area, I decided a fan would be great. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and take my Grill Armor Glove and use it to hold this piece while I spray it. So let's pull our camera down, kind of get our bag ready for this. So you get to shake it well. Oh yeah, the fan makes a huge difference. Earlier it was really strong. Great idea. Let's see. Spray your handle. Spray a little vinegar water on my glove and go rinse this thing off while I'm waiting. We'll give it an hour. We'll come back and we'll check our progress. See you in one hour. Okay, we're back to check it out. So let's get our camera down here to our skillet. And of course we have our fan going now. Let's take a look inside here. Looks like we have a lot of action going on. We're going to go ahead and take this and give it a good rinse and we'll wash it really well. We'll bring it back in here and let you take a look at it. Okay, we still have a little bit of residual seasoning around the edge and the pour spout. The handle looks good. Of course, we have some pretty heavy duty seasoning right around the heat ring. I'm thinking for another application, we may let it go a longer time. We went one hour on the first round, one hour on the second round, and I think for our third round, we're gonna go ahead and let it set for probably a few hours, probably, probably even half a day. We'll see how it turns out. Give us a good shake. It 
And I've got my fan running, so I got better ventilation. Really want to get that heat ring good. Since it appears that we have quite a bit of hard crud on the bottom, especially around the heat ring, I think I'm going to go ahead and let it go about four hours. We'll come back and check it then. Because I'm getting kind of low on my easy off. It's the second uh, skillet I've done. I've done one not too long ago and I used about half of it. So I'm thinking you're going to use about a half a can per skillet. Of course I know if I had to let it sit a little bit longer it would have worked a little better because it has to have time to work. We're going to go ahead and give it about four hours. We'll check it out and see what kind of results we have. I think we got enough spray for one more application. Okay, it's been four hours. We're going to check out our progress. Okay, let's take a look. See here. You can see it's doing some more work on it. So let me go rinse it off and come back and we'll take another look at it. Okay, we have uh, the inside is looking better. We got a little bit right here that's not coming loose and a little bit on the pour spouts that's not well it's kind of it's coming off of my fingernail but I do believe it's going to take a little more time now the back is good except for right around the heat ring and a little bit on the inside so I think it's going to need another application and I'm going to let this one sit all night. So I'm going to spray it down with what's left in my can. And then I'm going to put it back in the bag. And we'll check it out tomorrow. Let's get our fan back on. Because I really want to breathe. The handle was pretty good, so I'm not going to hit the handle. I am going to make sure the pour spouts get it. So we're going to put this back in our bag. Okay, we're going to let this set all night and uh, we'll check it out and hopefully it'll be all broke loose so that we can go ahead and put a layer of seasoning on it but we'll check it out and just see how it does so we'll see you tomorrow okay i got it all washed up and there's a little bit of pitting on the inside there but i believe that will fill in because it's really light and uh, we see we might have just a a little bit of leftover staining from the from the seasoning. I probably need to go ahead and do another layer, but we're basically out. Yeah, I can't get any more spray out of it. I went ahead and applied a paste coat of my own personal seasoning blend just to make sure I don't have any flash rust issues. But you can see it turned out really, really nice for a easy off oven cleaner. I guess the best advice to say when using the oven spray method is to spray it down really liberal the first day, put it in a bag and let it sit overnight. You'll get more action and it won't dry out in one night, especially if you spray it liberally and you seal the bag well. The next day, rinse it off, do the same thing. Do that for three days and you'll probably be through with stripping all the old seasoning off of your cast iron. If it's really bad gunky, I'm talking about, you know, 
years and years of buildup. You may have to go a fourth or even a fifth day, but I believe for most pieces, you'll only have to do it three times. So I believe the easy off oven spray method is a valid method, especially if you don't want to go through the trouble of a lye tank or an electrolysis tank. And I hope that you've got something out of it and uh, learn from my mistakes. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please do not forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I promise to keep more of them coming. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We have a newsletter that goes out every week or so. You can sign up for that. And if you would like, you could also check out Cast Iron Cookware Facebook group. And I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Hey everyone, before you go, I just want to share a little something with you. In Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I just want to say, share the word, and go out and be a blessing.